Dear friends, good morning or good evening, depend, depending on where and when you are. I am very happy to participate in this outstanding global conference. I do hope this conference will be a step in the right direction. Probably a small, uh, modest step, but definitely in the right direction. Uh, I greet you from Moscow. My name is Pavel Kasyanov. Um, uh, for my greeting I chose two pictures of Moscow. Almost everybody knows and has seen pictures of Red Square and Kremlin. So, for greeting you, I selected two other remarkable buildings. You can see here the main building of the Moscow State University, named after the famous Russian scientist of the 18th century, Mikhail Lomonosov. This temple of education and science was built in 1953. And the second building is a Stankina television and radio tower built in 1967. It's uh, 540 meters height and it was the tallest building in the world until 1976. Uh, and it is the tallest building in Europe by now. I'm now somewhere between these two buildings in the center of Moscow. So again, my greetings from Moscow to all of you. Almost 11 years ago, we together with Dr. Michael Ellis composed a statement or declaration addressed to Rai Plus 10 Summit on so-called sustainable development. The summit was held in Johannesburg. Our message was a proposal on transition to a sustainable civilization. We understood that the official views on so-called sustainable development didn't reveal and didn't embrace the most important issues and problems. Decade has passed since that time and it proves the major message of our statement solution of the humanity problems lies in the new paradigm integrating spirituality and science. I have to emphasize that problems of humanity are much deeper and more difficult than overwhelming majority of people even can imagine. I was suggested to speak today about enslaving, on how enslaved we are and how we are enslaved. And of course to speak on how we can unslave ourselves. In this regard I'd like to start with a quote from Goethe. None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. It's about our modern society. Today people are enslaved by the economy, by a global technocratic, moreover financocratic civilization, or in philosophical terms by power of money. In a more comprehensive sense, modern society is enslaved by dominating value paradigms, value system in which material, physical values dominate. And in this regard we need to consider, at least in brief and roughly, a hierarchy of values and dominant values of a modern society. Also, we are enslaved by wrong concepts, both scientific and religious. Even when you are sure that you tell the truth, you may in fact lie just because 
the concept system, notions, terms we commonly use are inadequate, wrong, and any attempts to describe social or physical reality using wrong notions, wrong concept system, wrong paradigm, fail. In general, without going into details, one can distinguish three levels of values. These three levels correspond to entitative levels of the objective reality. The top level is divine love, agape, conscience, the true genuine knowledge and, as a social consequence, harmony in relationships with the nature and between people. Second, a middle level of values is foundations, maxims, principles, rule, rules. The lower, lowermost level of values is the material values and their quintessence money. Depending on what type, what level of values is dominating in a society, we get different type of, types of socio-economic formation, different types of political organization of society, different types of power and governance. I put some images to illustrate societies with different dominating values. First, first three images illustrate society with dominant values such as divine love and harmony. It was the golden age. Of course, we don't have yet real original photos of such a society, but the images you see here give some idea. Such a society doesn't need special temples or palaces of God to communicate with God. Today, it's difficult to imagine that Golden Age epoch was a reality. But there are some evidences, and one of them is very simple and surprising at the same time. In Russian language, word, notion, other, other person, means friend. Другой, друг, друг means friend, is noun, substantive. Другой, other, is adjective, formed by adding an inflectional ending oi, which is usual ending uh, for adjectives in Russian, in Russian language. Moreover, another word, anyone, is cognate with true love. These words have also the same root, lub. Anyone may easily check this with a vocabulary. I think it is an evidence of reality of the Golden Age, characterized by so strange for us relationship between people. So, if the dominant values are divine love, harmony in relationships with the nature and between people. Such a society is a golden age-like society and if we are homo sapiens or at least homo more or less sapiens, we need to turn our development towards these highest values, divine love, true knowledge and harmony though on the new technological basis. I do not appeal to abandon all achievements of our civilization, not all, but some, and of course all major aberrations, delusions, misguiding thinking. Then, in the middle row, we see beautiful cathedral, mosque and royal palace. They illustrate epoch we know better, 
theocracies, monarchies, Islamic states, in general terms, ideocracies. Divine love and harmony gave place to, or were replaced by, different sets of maxims, foundations, principles, which are partially coincide in different religions, but at the same time contradict or differ in many important aspects. However, people in such societies at least believe that values of spirit, spirituality, are of the highest priority. Though communication with God is not direct anymore, it is mediated by specialized religious institutes. The temples you see here and thousands of other temples were even more impressive than palaces of rulers, kings and emperors. Though emperors and kings were in turn anointed of the Lord, these temples are material embodiment of domination of spiritual values in a theocratic or ideocratic society. Then, on the bottom, we see our modern world society of dominant material physical values, consumption society and its temples and palaces, financial centers, banks and luxury shopping malls, for instance, spells of the Federal Reserve System of the US, and two world financial centers, temples, financial temples in China, in Taipei and Shanghai, both 101 story and around 500 meters height respectively. This moving down we used to call progress and sustainable development. Sustainable development in the dominating paradigm means further sustainable moving down. Technical progress has been accompanied by degradation of values of the highest priority, spiritual values, then by distortions of maxims, foundations and principles of the highest level and appearance of principles and rules that are not compatible with the divine disposal, with the God's will, God's will. Foundations, maxims and principles also have a certain hierarchy from the highest true maxim, maxims to completely distorted wrong dogmas, principles and rules. There is no possibility to consider this issue in details. I mean maxims and principles, classification and hierarchy, but at least one wrong conceptual principle cannot be avoided or missed. It's formu formulated in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verses 19 and 20. This wrong principle and wrong instrument usually through or due to Protestantism was legitimated, legalized in the Netherlands, then in Britain, then in Europe and North America, and now almost everywhere. Do not charge your brother interest, whether on money or food or anything else that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest. Though Protestantism, like uh, Judaism, contained a great number of true principles, provisions and dogmas, in both cases it was enough to support and promote only one wrong principle. Interest money and usury. It was enough to undermine social development and distort the social structure, incentives and the whole, the entire economic system. I'll show major consequence on some next slides. Moreover, 
parasitic mechanism of usury was supplemented by private money emission. I mean private banks authorized to emit under the image of the national currency. i.e. British currency pound sterling starting 1694 and until 1946 i.e. 252 years US dollar since 1913 and some other This figure illustrates the destructive impact an unfortunate consequence of usury and private money emission. To summarize the idea, I had mentioned that rejection of divine love moved humanity down to theocracy, monarchy, and to establishing a number of religions. Rejection of maxims and principles in favor of money moved the society down to religion of money and power of money in the form of global financial parasitical oligarchy. So we got in our over-materialized society. And the following step can be to forfeit even the material world or to turn back to spiritual values. This figure illustrates the income distribution in a modern financiocratic economy, economy on the left, and a hypothetical model which may evolve out of the present model should it persist freely on a global basis. The income size is marked on the vertical axis, while the share of the population with respective income level is depicted horizontally. Hate of escape of this onion is approximately one million times more than hate of the bulb itself. Interest rate provides income growth according to exponential function. It means that sooner or later, within just several centuries, not from now, from 17th century at latest, several richest bankers will own all assets of the earth and they already own a big part of the world assets. This is a clear example of how one wrong principle may cause global problems or catastrophic consequences or even a collapse of all humanity. Global oligarchs and all managers hired by them are enslaved by impossibility to tell the truth whether on political or economical, historical or financial, social or governmental issues. The parasitic evil essence of the finance crisis can be most convincingly demonstrated with the following calculation. One penny invested at the birth of Jesus Christ at 4% interest would have bought in 1750, one bowl of gold equal to the weight of the earth. In 1990, it would buy over 8,000 such bowls of gold. It's a quote from, from the book Interest and Inflation Free Money, wrote by Margaret Kennedy, and I advise to read this book if you haven't read yet. That is why the fictitious financial capital has grown to loom large. Turnover on the foreign exchange and stock markets are 
hundreds of times higher than production um, and trade turnovers. However, the public productive force which draws on natural and human resources cannot support such an exponential growth of production even in theory. In any case, the usury is virtually authorized to issue world money and create worldwide demand for their merchandise and which has all the potential to instigate financial crisis is an ideal foundation to enable a small group of people at some moment in history to misappropriate all basic assets and acquire the overall authority i.e. plenitude of the power. After legalization of the usury followed with usurpation by private individuals of the right to issue the very world money, the ultimate financial enslavement of the earthmen became just a question of time. One more picture illustrating distortional parasitical impact of usury. It is usual supply-demand curves. But I indicated market pink, a parasitic part or parasitic share in all major components of costs and price of any product or service i.e. parasitic share in salaries, capital costs, in surplus product or profit, and even in taxes. You pay this parasitic charge or share even if you personally have never taken out a loan. The more and more we work, the more and better we work, the faster incomes of global oligarchs grow, the faster grow their assets and power over all humanity. Next figure shows comparative configuration and size of bulbs of developed countries, Russia and similar countries, China and India. While bulbs are yet separate, country-specific scapes are in fact merged in one global scape. The United Nations Human Development Report 16 years ago in 1996 says that today the net worth of the 358 richest people is equal in dollar terms to the combined income of the poorest 45 of the world's population, i.e. around 3 billion people. It is this finance crisis that sets the current rules of the global development. They operate through their agents in control of the critical governmental positions. Uh, in Switzerland's Federal Technological Institute in Zurich, a group of researchers Stefania Vitali, James Gladfelder and Stefano Battiston investigated global corporate assets and discovered a huge level of asset and economic power concentration. They analyzed 37 million companies recorded in Financial Information Database Orbis. First, they revealed a node of 1,318 companies which control around 60% of global incomes. It's, uh, it's 
it's an image uh, presenting part of the results. It's so-called the Powerball. Researchers continued their investigations and revealed uh, 147 companies which controlled over 40% of the monetary value of all trans transnational corporations. Then they revealed 49 companies that control over 39%. A uh, central core of extremely powerful actors shown as red, red dots dominates international corporate finance. Here you can see the list of top 38 companies from Gladfelder investigations. And I marked red uh, several corporations that uh, for sure among the major owners of the Federal Reserve System of the United States probably other or some other uh, corporations are also among the Fed owners. And here, uh, here is a list of table of top 10 companies revealed by Gladfelder with colleagues. These 10 companies control 19.5% of the global financial network. Do you still believe that the real power belongs to people you democratically elect? On the top of a shadow hierarchy of global power, there are several people or clans whose assets count to trillion dollars and they rule using finances, money, financial institutes and financial instruments. These financiocrats or their managers select candidates for presidential posts, then electorate democratically vote for any of two pretenders there were several presidents in the history of the United States who had their own understanding and moreover their own will and they paid the highest price for their firm positions. Congressman Alan Grayson asked the Federal Reserve Inspector, Inspector General Elizabeth Coleman about the trillions of dollars lent or spent by the Federal Reserve uh, to unknown entities. And Inspector Elizabeth Coleman responded that she doesn't know and she is not tracking where this money is. Uh, you can see video of this dialogue in the US Congress following these links. However, under pressure of some influential politicians like Ron Paul, uh, such an audit was conducted and it, uh, it re revealed uh, um, amazing figures um, from the period between December 2007 and June 2010 i.e. two years and a half the Federal Reserve generated and gave out 16 trillion dollars and top 
addressee of this financial help. Uh, you can see here and uh, banks market red. Uh, they are listed in Gladfelder. Uh, researchers, uh, result of Gladfelder researchers on the top of the most influential, influential uh, corporations and they are among Federal Reserve owners. I would like also uh, to mention one speech of President John Kennedy. A speech about uh, secret societies. Secret societies undoubtedly, un undoubtedly, uh, or at least many of them, are instruments of global oligarchy. Kennedy appealed mass media to reveal and to publish true facts, true information, and leave no space for secret and hidden activities of secret societies. Apart, of, apart from parasitic financial system, we enslaved by a lie about our economy, political institutes, real reasons and causes of wars, revolutions, terrorists act, presidents and other politicians murders on democracy itself and while 99% of people are, recipient, are recipients of this lie people on the top uh, of the onion scape have to lie from morning to night having no alternative so, if we, regular citizens, at least theoretically, have a choice to believe or not to believe, to lie or not to lie, global oligarchs and their managers, especially from mass media, almost have no choice to lie or not to lie. So, they are extremely enslaved compared to average citizens. Mass media mostly lie, science, whether political or economical, lies, modern or ancient history, as well as, or as bad as anthropology and paleontology, and many other sciences, are a mixture of aberrations, truth and lie. So, our mass media, education and even science are separated from true, genuine knowledge by, by a screen. And power of money, financial crisis is not interested to make true knowledge available for plebs. Because knowledge is a power and it's a power of a higher hierarchical level than money. So, it's necessary to remove the screen like this. Society is enslaved not only by wrong scientific concepts, not only by mass media and education, but also by religious dogmas. There are hundreds of branches, sects, factions within major confessions. Even when you are sure that you tell the truth, you may in fact lie just because the concept system, dogmas we use are inadequate. So, the only way for us to improve the global situation, to make transition to sustainable civilization, 
and maybe even to survive is to break negative tendency of falling down and to turn back to spiritual values. The humanistic logic requires that correct fundamental principles be embedded in the foundation. The four, source, four sources and components of the sustainable humanistic civilization are new scientific paradigm that would unite science and spirituality, purposeful evolution of the society, harmonious development of the personality, interest-free money, cooperation and competitiveness. The new paradigm resolves contradictions in the dual pairs spirit versus matter, science versus religion, physical or material values versus spiritual ones. This paradigm describes the structure of the universe on an essentially new level, including explanation of the materiality of thought, emotions, so Thank you very much for your attention and patience and I hope that based on, based on new paradigm and dissemination on through knowledge we will be able to prevent a global catastrophe and uh, to establish to establish new type of civilization, new society, uh, sustainable civilization and living in harmony with the nature and in relationships with people. Thank you and if you have comments and questions please send to my email.